Okay. Um, so let's hit up some announcements and then we'll get into work time. My, my guess is that you will, um, you're going to get a good chunk of stuff done today, but you, you might have some free time. Okay. Um, this is for advisory. So all advisory classes are now being asked to take attendance on Wednesdays. Actually, all of your classes are being, are, are taking attendance on Wednesdays. If you forgot that, or if you didn't know that, uh, surprise, um, all classes are being asked to take attendance on Wednesdays. So there's two ways that you get marked present for attendance. Typically, one of them is that you come to class. Um, the other one is that you would access your content. So if you have a class on class on Google Classroom, your teacher has its own setup, their own setup. In K-12, by clicking into your content and just opening it up for like a minute and scrolling around, that will put you on an attendance log that will say that you access the course content. Check. Um, so what I did here is I put an attendance category in the content. Okay. So what I want you to do on Wednesday, that's tomorrow, is to go into attendance and click on the attendance form. Yes, I put the attendance form in the announcement. Or you could go in through content and access it. Okay. It just says what's your name and the date. And then we're just going to keep using it. Okay, I'm, I just want one form, everything in the same place. We're just going to keep using it. So then you'll just submit another um, form. You don't even have to like open it, open it. You just click on that and it opens it in the window. I tried to make it as easy as possible. So that's that. Um, so number one, new announcement, attendance is taken on Wednesday. I know it's not fun, but it's the attendance game that we need to play because you are getting credit for advisory this trimester. And so in order for them to justify giving you credit, we have to take attendance. Okay. Laws and stuff, man. Other things that are going on. Your registration information is in here. And the other one I'm going to add for you is letters of recommendation. I'm just going to call it letters of rec. Some people call it letters of reference. Um, but the gist is this. Um, I'm going to walk you through that today. So I've gone over. Where did my, where did my slide go? So I've gone over registration. We're still working on that. There's still a couple people that I need to check in with and look at what you've registered for classes. And if you are done registering for classes, then I want you to move on to letters of recommendation. So what are letters of recommendation? Uh, they, it's gonna be this form, okay? So a letter of recommendation is this, that there's many times in your life when you're going to need a letter of rec or a letter of reference. Um, what it means is that is a person who can vouch for your character. Um, they're generally people who have seen your work ethic and they know your strengths as a person. And they're usually people who are in positions of authority, sometimes an older coworker, but they're rarely ever family or friends. Sometimes you like make friends with people that you work with, but in general, um, when you get a letter of recommendation, like it shouldn't be your family or your friends. So what you need to do is you need to find three to five people that you are going to ask for a letter of recommendation. I believe that your senior portfolio asks for two or three, but on your resume and if you're applying for scholarships, sometimes those ask for two, sometimes they ask for three. Uh, so I say three to five because then you find your three and then you have some backups if you need it. If you don't know who to ask, um, some good choices are teachers, coaches, counselors, a boss, a current or former boss, a church group leader, a volunteer coordinator, um, someone like that. So at the very least, you should have my name 
Um, and you'll put like my name first and last, Tiffany Leggett. What is my title? I am an English teacher at SHS. How do you know them? My advisory teacher. How long have you known them? Um, right now it's two years. Okay, uh, what is my email? Tlega at sheltonschool.org. And that should be sufficient. I'm not giving you my phone number just yet. I might do that later. Um, and then we'll say the date that you asked me is today, so the 26th. So maybe 27th. Um, here's the thing, though. You can use me. You can use this. But you also have to ask me. So with letters of recommendations, um, it's okay to have two people be a teacher, but really one should be someone not school related. Um, maybe it's even a good idea to get a letter of recommendation from someone that's not in your best subject. I know that doesn't always sound um, like, that's what I'm looking for. that doesn't sound like natural but that person can speak to how well-rounded you are. So what I want you to do is this step. I want you to, to brainstorm five, five names and what, what's their job. You could probably fill out this part of it, okay? So today, if you are done with your registration, I want you to fill this part out. You can use me. That's fine. Um, you might have to look up their email or their phone. And this is probably where you're going to get this piece. So today we're working on who, who are they, what's their job title, how long have you known them. Then if you want to start reaching out to people, you can ask them for their email and their phone numbers. The reason why you do this is um, you put this information on their resume you um, will also need to know this if you're applying for a scholarship or a job. They need to know the person's phone number or email so that they can contact them. Um, and then you can put your date asked. So what happens a lot of time is that seniors wait until the last minute to ask people for their letters of recommendation. And the reality is nobody owes you a letter of recommendation. You can ask a teacher and they can say, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to write it? Um, based on your experience with that teacher, you might not want certain teachers writing it. You might not want me to write you a letter of recommendation. I don't know. Um, but I want you to create this list of three to five so that if somebody says no, or if somebody writes a letter and it just ends up not being very strong and that and you see the letter, um, then you can pick and choose the strongest letters. So we're starting this early because your letters of recommendations are due in the fall. Your letters of recommendations are due in the fall. But if you can ask people early, then you get on their radar. And then we, we have a lot easier job when it comes to the fall. Um, and also, this gives you a chance to see, oh, I am having a hard time finding people. This gives you a time and an opportunity to round some people up. Okay? <laughs> so that's what we're working on today. Um, I'm, I'm checking in with some people on registration. And then I am putting this assignment in. the content. Okay, so that's what we're doing today is we're finishing registration and we're working on letters of recommendation. I saw I had some questions and I will answer those in just a second.